Listen, you shouldn't have to stretch your budget to buy jeans with a little give. High-end denim can cost hundreds of dollars, but bargain brands don't offer the same level of style and comfort. Yeah. You got you can't get some jeans that cost you hundreds of dollars and no. like have to do a juice cleanse to get into them. <laughs> totally. So distilled, spelled D S T L D, they've revolutionized the fashion industry with their timeless luxury grade denim. So you get jeans that would normally cost you hundreds starting at just sixty five bucks. Yeah. They eliminate these crazy markups because they refuse to work with middlemen. Refuse. They ship directly to you for free and guarantee the fit, or they'll send you a new pair until they're perfect. Distilled jeans are built to last and will be a staple in your closet for years. They also have a bunch of fall jackets. So if you're like into a classic denim or you want like a bomber jacket, you can just expect the same level of quality. Okay. And so for a discount, go to dstld.com slash feral and you'll get $10 off your first order. That's dstl, wait, d.com slash feral for $10 off. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Allie, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Fire away, dude. What? Fire away, dude. Oh, <laughs> yes or no? Finding the right hair color for you, Allie, yeah. can be a challenge. Uh, what color is my hair right now? Burgundy. Yeah. Was that on purpose? No. Did I need to use e salon? Yes, you did. Oh, I fucked it up. Oh wait, <laughs> you can scratch oh. that. No, it's mess- great. E salon offers professional grade. <laughs> Leave that in. <laughs> completely personalized hair color that's created just for you and delivered right to your door. Allie, you fucking need this. I need it so much. This is the last time I will color my hair without taking the steps to get the right color. I grabbed a color off the shelf. It was the wrong color. My hair is maroon now. Don't do it. Allie, do you love questionnaires? Yes. Here's a hair questionnaire. Upload your photo and a personal colorist will formulate your individually blended color from over 15 thousand pigments oh my god i know i need e-salon in a time machine to go back to yesterday (laughs) totally well they've got you covered there's a hundred percent satisfaction guaranteed if you're not happy ally oh god i need with your color it will give you a free reformulation or refund i think anything's better than what i did to myself before you look cute thanks dude but you know what? I like that the color doesn't fade. Like they have the grays covered. Because we get, I get some grays every once in a while. I mean, at 23 years old, I our know. gray is like pretending to start to come in. I know. It's probably because we're such big thinkers. We're so young. So you can visit esalon.com slash slumber party, all one word. And do that. You get 50% off your first order. So that's 10 bucks for your personalized hair color, which is crazy. Because the last time I got my hair colored in a salon, it was like $180. Dude, you can do it your freaking self. I've been doing it my freaking self for years and years. Yeah, I just, I really got the wrong color. So I need to use eSalon. You get 50% off your first box at eSalon.com slash slumber party. So go do that. Don't don't be an Allie Ward. Send us photos too. Hashtag it at, I don't know, Allie in Georgia. Let's see your hair. Yeah, just tag us in it on Instagram. Let's see your pictures. Let's do it. I want to look at your hair. Bye. Boy, do we have a treat for you. It's an encore presentation of the Karen Kilgariff episode of Slumber Party. If you are a murderino and you listen to My Favorite Murder with Karen in Georgia, you're going to love this little mashup of Karen on Slumber Party. She also has a wicked, wicked ghost story. And um, I think you guys are going to like this. If you've already listened to it, have another go at it. You might learn something new. If you haven't, this is definitely must listen episode. And we'll be back in a week or so with some new episodes. We're just uh, letting the dust settle on George's move. So enjoy. We'll be back soon. Heart you. Georgia. Summer party, Allie. Hi. Hi. It's Sunday afternoon. It sure is. It's how many degrees out is it right now? Uh, it's approximately hot as fuck. Yeah. It's got my temperature gauge said 1 billion fucking degrees. Yes. Which is actually what the Fahrenheit stands for. It's F. It F. actually also means fucking hot. Well, that's what I learned this week. So we're in my apartment. We didn't set up the TV because uh, please affirm, see aforementioned. It's so hot. <laughs> Georgia. What did you learn this? Well, Allie. <laughs> hey, this is Slumber Party Podcast with Allie and Georgia. Yes, it we is. We always start this with one thing we learned. Mm-hmm. What I learned 
George Alley, yeah. is that there is a place called Frog Frozen Yogurt in Hollywood. Oh. Uh, it's like a frozen yogurt bar, you know, like do it yourself. They weigh it. You know what else they do? Oh, no. They will deliver it Shut for you. up. $10 is all it takes. How much yogurt do you get for $10? Whatever. Well, you like, it has to be at least $10. So okay. you can get like two smalls with all these toppings. Or you can get like one large with like these toppings. And they'll deliver to you and they're open until midnight. That doesn't sound like a good business model. It's, who cares? Let's get at it. I mean, it sounds like great for us, but terrible for frog yogurt. Yeah. Well, what are they getting out of this? That, I bet they're, you know how much yogurt costs for people to buy? It's so cheap. I don't so know. So they just charge us three times as much. How much is a pizza when you get a pizza delivered? Uh, usually it ends up being around 20 something. Right? If you came at me with a business model, it's like, you need to order at least $75 for the yogurt and then we'll deliver it. I'd be like, okay, cause you need to have a refrigerated truck. You need to get a penguin who can drive. Okay. You're overthinking this. I just, just don't understand it as your Lord and Savior. Oh, okay. What'd you learn? What'd I learn? Um, I learned not to go into the frozen yogurt business. Mm-hmm. And also I learned about these, uh, I learned about, I'm going to bring it back to bugs because I feel like I haven't had a good bug fact in a while, mm-hmm. but I was reading about it and I'm reading about bugs that use tools. Mm-hmm. You know how a big thing in like animals is like, if you use tools, you're like next level mm-hmm. baller mm-hmm. in animal. And so there, there are a few bugs that use tools and one is the type of ant that will go up to its rival ant's nest and just drop boulders in it <laughs> like Indiana Jones so it can't get out and they wake <laughs> up and they're like, what the fuck, man? Heck? But, um, but there's a type of weaver ant, and they call this a tool because it implements a certain thing to use as glue when it's building its nest. So they take leaves together. They make a nest out of leaves, and they use the butts of their babies. Larva make a silk that the adults don't, so they will grab in their jaws a larva, and they'll use it like a glue gun <laughs> to make their house. And they that, rub their baby's butts yeah. on things as glue. Yeah. It'd be like if you were building a house and you're like, I got a bunch of leaves and some duct tape, but the duct tape comes out of my baby's butt. So I'm going to hold my baby in my mouth and I'm going <laughs> to duct tape my house together. And then someone's like, hey, good job. You used a tool. What if like cats did that? Or That'd dogs? Awesome. And it's just like a thing that they did. Yeah. You don't, you didn't know that? They grab their kittens and they smear in their butts. Oh, on uh, right, that's adorable. I know. Isn't that kind of cute though? Yeah. Anyway, that's what I learned. I we love should it. ask our guest. Hey, our... let's introduce our really awesome guest okay. who's a writer and a comedian and a musician and so effing funny and talented. And <clears throat> we love her. Her name is Karen Kilgariff. Oh, hi. Karen hi. Kilgariff. Hi. Uh, Big fan. Big fan. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for being here. With you gals. You gals. Yeah. What'd you learn? What would you learn? I learned this is a little bit woo woo, which is kind of my thing. I love it. Um, but I learned that the best way to say no to somebody that you don't want to say no to as a person, but you want to say no to the thing they're asking you for, is just to say that's not my thing. Oh. Okay. It was like it came to me, someone asked me to do something and be on like a the panel that picked people to do something. And I got all stressed out about it because I felt like I immediately had to do it. Like, it's that thing where someone asks you to do something, you're already doing it. Yeah. Instead of like that, you you almost go into that thing of like, well, I have to do this and this and this. And then I realized I just don't want to do it. <laughs> like I and I first of all, I had to realize like I have preferences and that's fine. It's a human being. And then I was like, well, now I have to tell them I don't want to do it. But normally I would just lie and be like, oh, I have ice skating lessons or some <laughs> weird shit. Like, oh, I can't. Like some weird thing. And instead I was like, oh, I don't have to lie. And it's not that big of a deal. And I just get to have a preference where I say, no, thanks. That's not my thing. What so, do they say? They said, oh, we totally understand. Thank you so much. That's great. Because I said, I adore you guys. I would love to do anything with you. This is just not my bag. The well, end. Did you feel like a like a... You had a woman. Yeah. Did you feel like a woman? Yeah. And a boss. And yes. did you feel like, oh, I'm prepared no matter what now for another one of these situations? Yes. It was like I bought the most perfect Ann Taylor boss suit that uh-huh. I now am mm. wearing invisibly for Your the rest of my life. Where I finally realized that my own reason is good enough. I never do that. I'm always like, yeah, I'll go with you to this concert with a million people there and no seating and like general admission. I'll go. Thing. 
That's so not my thing. Not my thing. And I don't have to be like, I love you. I, I care about you. So I'm going to go and be supportive of you. And then hate it and be like, oh. I'll be yes. like, I, that's not my thing, but I'll go to dinner with you beforehand. Exactly. You get to, you that's know what? Way. It's better to state your thing or what isn't your thing. Then people know instead of treating them like they're weird hothouse flowers that couldn't handle the facts of <laughs> right. just like, I don't like that. Like you don't have to match personalities with the people around you to get along with them. You don't have to like, you don't have to just because you get picked for a thing. I think that's the other mm-hmm. a- element. I was honored to be picked at because I didn't necessarily know these people, but it was like a comedy thing. So it was like, we've picked you. Ooh. And so I felt like that, uh, that's like a thing in this business where people kind of use that as like, well, you have been chosen. Now do exactly what we want you to do. Or, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you kind of get in on something. And they also say there's so many, there's so much in this in our society that's like you have to say yes to things that scare you you have to say yes and try it you have to yeah. see if you can do it when it's like and that's so much pressure to be like well if I say no I'm letting myself down I'm not, I'm not doing this and that and so you stress and stress about it when really it's like it's it could be something that it's just not right for you right it's the difference between being an adventurer it's like I'm, I am an adventurer I don't live like a closed down life so I don't have to say yes to everything because I do Oh, I do that in all these other ways. So there get to be ways where I'm just like, no. How nope. much would you rather to if you invited someone to go do something and like, oh, you know, I wish I could do it. That sounds so fun. But I have an orthodontia appointment and then I have a kite flying lesson. Yeah. And you're like, God damn. Okay, I'll try and get you in the next one. Wouldn't you rather they were like, oh, I don't want to do that. Yes. Then you just cross them off your list. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. then you know that person. It's like that's the point of actually being friends with people or getting to know people is actually knowing what they're like as opposed to like, are you going to be my weird shadow? Oh, well, then go fuck yourself. Like no one's looking for that. <laughs> so you might as well just assert yourself and just be like, hey, cool. But no, thanks. Like the, and, and that that's, uh, I'm saying that as if this is something other people need to hear when I know that as a 40 something woman, that's completely my <laughs> realization that I'll, probably a lot of people at, you know, around 20 were like, yeah, that's fine. But for me, I just never was able to do this until like literally two days ago where I was like, Oh, the phrase not my thing is, uh, is a full sentence. That's I feel like that's you being say. vulnerable. Is Two, it? right? Do you think it is? Wouldn't Brene, 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 Brene yeah. Brown of Daring Greatly, Daring Greatly would say, "Be vulnerable," because that is you do. You are like, here's what I like and don't like, and they could come back at you and be like, "Karaoke's not your thing." Yeah, don't you like art? And you'd be like, <laughs> or you know they this. could be like, "You're by saying no, you're somehow an asshole or a snob," which is like my big thing. Is and like, that's their that that's their issue. Right. As I long guess as you're not a dick about it. Probably wouldn't work for someone's birthday party. <laughs> and they're like, do you want to celebrate my existence? And you're like, I it's really don't want to. <laughs> I guess you could just be like, parties aren't my thing. What do you do, though, if like, like I had a, you know, like I have friends and it really stresses me out lately when people are like, here's what I'm doing for my birthday. And it's this incredibly complicated thing. Like, no. go to a fucking bar and, and let people buy you drinks like a normal human being. Instead, don't make me drive to Pasadena to some like a bar that has this complicated thing and well, like a dress code and a, a list dress code and then i'm gonna have to drive home and i don't want to dr- i don't want to put myself in a situation hey. where i need to drink and drive that's basically a drinking and driving themed party if you're inviting <laughs> people to pasadena <laughs> to drink and then drive i mean yes that's, that's your that's what you're asking i think for. birthdays are like come with me to this place i love to go to and yeah. don't make me pay for any of it well, let's play. It was my let's play. It was my birthday. Let's want to play a slumber party game. That's you. You can't say no because this you is can't a slumber party. I don't know why I asked you that. But it's my thing now. I I love to say no. I finally figured out how to do it. You can't say no. no. Yeah. You could say no. Well, okay, let's so, hear what it is. Let's hear what it is. Are you gonna put my hand in water? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna put no. your hand in water. You're just gonna urinate on yourself. Okay, it's fine. And it's, it's fine. gonna be recorded. Are you okay. cool with that? Okay. Yes, sure, guys. It's my thing. I want to belong to the party. But no, we play a game called It Was My Birthday, and no, it's not. It's called. It was my birthday. birthday. And it, that's just essentially like, it's like an, an font would be like Adobe entitlement. <laughs> <laughs> but so, uh, but we talk about your best birthday or even your last birthday or your worst birthday. But you know, it's funny because like every time you see a person, like someone's a dick to you in a parking lot, right? They cut you off. And you're like, nee, you're a dick. But you're like, you know what? That person has had like a really bad birthday. That person, <laughs> what did that person do on their last birthday? And that can, like, what if that person like missed their flight and ate Cheetos alone on their last birthday? Well, you don't know that also, about them. Like, what, what if it's like you have a secret to birthdays? Like our friend True. Kat just went to Chicago alone for her birthday and was like, fuck everyone. Yeah. Goodbye. Wow. Yeah. 
To do a specific thing? To go see the city and eat and drink and have fun. Oh, wow. By yourself, because she hates birthdays. Birthdays? What about you? She doesn't like drinking and driving. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't like drinking and driving. We're to Pasadena. We're going to go to the Jägermeister go-kart field. <laughs> You're like, wait a minute. I was a little nervous, Allie, of your last birthday party. It what ended up being great. One? Oh, I thought my last one was foolproof. It was great. But before, but bef- when I got the invitation, I was like, huh? It was a full beaver moon party she had a party in a, sh- in a in a field late at night yes. where it's illegal to go to late at night and oh, drink okay <laughs> yeah and also initially when you put the, when you made the invitation you accidentally made it to start at 11 p.m oh that's because i was i made it in new york and i met yes. west coast time anyway on my, my last birthday there was a full moon and the last moon in november is called a full beaver moon because <laughs> <laughs> that is when uh native american tribes would build dams like their last dams before everything froze over but anyway um so it was a full beaver moon party and i was like i have a telescope let's just go meet in at night in a public park and you can bring wine if you want also someone brought something to make an open fire you're right it was a little (laughs) i looking back on it i was like what could be simpler (laughs) yeah you're right i'm sorry it was great it ended up being such a great party but i was so it was a stressful thing because what the because like all the variables were too yeah so many variables there were a lot of ways you could get arrested on unintentionally right. arrested exactly. mm-hmm. and the, the peeing situation is difficult yeah the people peed in bushes yeah always a concern right yeah, yeah especially for someone who pees a lot like yeah myself. for sure me too i really didn't realize uh <laughs> quite what a terrible idea that was anyway what was your last birthday <laughs> i think that's fun <laughs> it was so much fun but i do have that thing of i would have been the person that was always looking for cops if i knew that yeah. was a possibility and then i would have that i just have that weird thing of yeah. like i don't want to get in trouble if the cops showed up i would have just been like astronomy and they would have been like oh sweet continue moon gazing i don't know like i'm naive about it i was like no one here has a knife right yeah. exactly. well you don't know your friends that well That's do you true. or the people hiding in the bushes you know? right 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 who were just us peeing right. <laughs> anyway okay your last birthday or your best worst birthday i can't remember my last birthday because i think it was like it was one of those i maybe i was home with my family and we just did something really low-key where's your family uh, Northern California. Petaluma. Oh, oh, that's lovely up there. Yeah, it's pretty nice. I feel like um, there's a lot of goat farms and like dairies and wineries. Yeah, rolling hills. Well, tons of rolling hills. Like gift shops that close at like six. Yeah, because they're just gonna make dinner in the back. Oh, shut <laughs> up! That's yeah. amazing. There's a place that's on the way from my hometown, Petaluma. You drive out to the beach, which is only like 20 minutes away, oh. and you drive through a little. You can drive through a little town called freestone and it is a one street town and one of the only things in the town is a bakery Mm. and you stop at the freestone bakery and it's these women we went there like just by chance on halloween one year and it's clearly a coven of witches that run this bakery (gasps) because it's just all these women in this huge room making all this insane all these insane baked goods and breads and things that are like insanely delicious for whom like whom buys them um <laughs> well they ship them to like, oh. my town and then cool. the, and maybe san francisco because they're very artisan it's almost yeah. like la brea bakery style <gasps> Every, but desserts as well that's but my it dream was like we happened upon it it was uh. the best and i for probably 20 minutes i was like i think i have to move here because it's like in this part of um, Sonoma County where it's all rolling hills, green rolling hills, and then these long strands of eucalyptus, um, oh. lanes of eucalyptus Stop that to it. me is just my favorite. What visual. if, um, yeah, what if we need to do that? Move to a tiny place. If you could get a discount on pastries, would you become a witch? Oh. Like, would you be like, I'll join your Wiccan party. How, what kind of discount do I get? I think that's a big stretch. Yeah. I'd do it. You can make your own pastries. Can uh, you? Is there like a Wicca light? Is there like a oh. semi Wicca? Like, so you could just skim Wickish, like you, candles, just a candle thing, just candles and like dresses and like kind of like wolves. But like you're, kind of you don't wolves. have to do any spells or there anything. There must be spiritual. Right? You're a spiritual person. You just get one of those stickers that says like "Women Run with the Wolves" or whatever. <laughs> yeah, you gotta have crystals, right? You know what I want? I want to put something on my my Hyundai Elantra that says "My other car is a broom." <laughs> That's all I want. <laughs> um, speaking of witches and brooms and stuff, yeah. Can we ask you your ghost stories? Oh, oh yes, that's my. We hear that you have great ones. I do. I have two. Uh, one is from college. We lived in this house in Sacramento. Um, that 
it was me and three other girls and it was the summertime in Sacramento. So my friend, one of my friends had the upstairs, what you, it was like a redone attic that she literally couldn't be in for the whole summer because it was probably 300 degrees in this room because Sacramento, like outside it was 110 and inside our house it was probably 90. But then if you, the closer you got to the swamp heater, it would, it was like 89. So we'd literally get drinks and sit around the swamp heater all day long. Swamp heater. It's the thing that goes in the window. That's, that's, it cools like electrically as opposed to central air. Oh, you it know, has the, a, it has water in it. So it, mm-hmm. it's almost like a mist fan. So I've it never it heard of it. Like a little mist of water on you. Then your body is like, OK, I'll evaporate this. And your body temperature goes down like <laughs> half of half a degree. Wow. Yeah. So we'd like sit with our like our arms up on the swamp heater oh. and like try to get cool. It was really super miserable. So um, basically we would have friends over all the time and we would party at night and then Inevitably, somebody would wake up in the day and go, who was doing dishes last night? And nobody would. We never put it together. We never talked about it. It would always be like, no, I didn't. And one time I slept on the couch in the front room and I distinctly heard the water running. I woke up. The water was running. Dishes were being moved around because we never did the dishes. You're the ghost made. Sink full. And so there was like some action in the kitchen um, and I never even thought to ask any I was just kind of like oh that it was like that weird thing you know in your 20s and you just kind of are going along you're just hoping everything doesn't explode all the time so <laughs> especially like, when there's a lot of you too because you just don't check in with anyone yeah you don't check in and you're you're like I avoided the kitchen altogether because I never washed one dish and they hated me for it <laughs> no. and I didn't care so it was always kind of like well let's just see if one of them starts crying and then I'll do the dishes it was <laughs> it was kind of it, you know I was the, the evil roommate so anyway we had that a couple times, and then one night, or what? I had this dream that was very, very upsetting. I my room was in the front of the house, and I had this dream that I heard people talking on our front porch. And I got up and looked out, and it was like an old fashioned door with the glass at the top. Mm-hmm. And I looked out, and there was a mother and a daughter with braids and with a suitcase. And the mother was saying to the daughter, "We're just going to stay here for a little while, and <gasps> hopefully he goes away." <gasps> We'll just, we'll just hide here. And we had this weird tiny front porch on this house. So literally I woke up like in the dream. I was just looking out the window, watching them talk. And then I woke up and I was really upset when I woke up. So it wasn't, it was like a nightmare, but it didn't track as nightmarish except for just the really bad feeling. Yeah. Such goosebumps right now. So I opened the door to my room, which opened onto the front room near the swamp heater and my other roommate who was supposed to be up in her attic room that couldn't sleep up there, slept downstairs all the time. When I opened my door, she woke up and she went <gasps> like that. And I was like, <gasps> I was looking at her and she's like, Oh, I just had the worst nightmare. And I go, was it the mother and daughter with the braids? <gasps> no, and no, no. she burst into <gasps> tears and goes, why did you say that? Why did you say that? Oh, and like, like started screaming. And then we were just both staring at each other. And we, we talk about Allie's face real quick before we go on right now. Cause Allie is <laughs> hyperventilating. Are you crying a little bit? <laughs> she's crying. <laughs> you're making Allie's day right now. Um, it's so scary. It was crazy. <laughs> Allie, you're crying. Shut up. <laughs> and so here's the thing that like, this is what I love about this story is oh. then like in any good horror film, you find out who you used to live there. Everyone leaves for oh. the weekend, but me. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Bye, I say innocently to everyone as this thing happens that like literally seconds after it happened, we're both cracking keystone lights as if nothing happened and not talking about it. Oh, my God. Um, So everyone leaves for the weekend and I'm in this empty house by myself. So and I'm reading Silence of the Lambs, the book. Oh, good. Bad idea. So I go to bed and I wake up. Well, this is this can take a little bit of explaining. It's slightly irritating, but my ba- the bathroom was connected to my room and then the back hallway. So there was a door that opened onto the bathroom from my room, and then the, on the other side of the bathroom, it opened onto the hallway where my roommate Christie's room was, Got and it. the stairs up to the attic. And I woke up in the middle of the night hearing someone walking down that back hallway, and I was laying um, with my back to my room, facing the wall, hearing slow footsteps and I thought this is I'm asleep this isn't really happening it's just the house crickling and the more I'm saying that to myself the more it's very definitive footsteps Holy walking down this hallway. Shit. then I hear the bathroom door open 
No. Then I hear three footsteps go across the linoleum to the door to my no, room. No, I would no. kill myself. No. Then I hear the door to my room open. Nope. So at this point, I am just staring at this wall. Dustin's face right now, too, is I'm losing I'm fully it. awake. I, I believe that I'm awake. I'm sure we could go back and they could prove to doctors that you I wasn't or something, but I'm positive I was yeah. awake. You were, having a, you were having an experience. In, I was having a very real, real experience. I'm staring at the wall going, this is how I die. No way. That's so crazy because I've always been interested in murder and now I'm going to be murdered. You thought it was like a murderer. I was positive. There was a man in the house. Yeah. My door, my bedroom door opens. I hear two (gasps) slow, quiet steps on shag carpet, which was what was in my room. Then I feel my bed tip back as he sits on the edge of my bed. And I'm staring, literally like my hands were underneath my cheek, like a little prayer mode. And I feel, I just feel myself tip backwards. (gasps) Like towards him? Towards him. And then one arm goes under me and one um comes across and starts hugging me hugging me hug tight 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 until like all the air is pushed out of me and i am sitting there like i can't breathe i'm like holy shit did you think it was a person still yes and then and then like boom it was just over so like suddenly i could breathe i took this crazy gasping breath and called my sister and was like, you have to, it was like three 30 in the morning. And I called my sister and said, you have to come and get me right now. And she was so mad at me. Cause she was like, you scared the shit out of me. And I'm like, you, you have to come right now. You can't like get in your car in whatever you're wearing and come and get me. And did she do it? Yes. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And then I stayed at her house until all my roommates came back. And then we just kept living there. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> did you tell them about it? Um, Yeah. But I mean, I, it was really embarrassing. Like I didn't, I was by myself. Yeah. I was reading this scary book. I just didn't think people believed me. But what I honestly think happened, because I kind of believe in stuff like that. And I just, I was hugged by a ghost. I was hugged by somebody. Yeah. I'm That's positive. so much worse than Touch My Angel, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, yeah. There's no Della Reese in my story. Oh. Um, I think that the person that was living in this house killed those two, oh. the mother and daughter. And I think his ghost is still in that house. And I think he put the mother and daughter in my room and then went and murdered them. That's just my personal theory. Uh, holy shit. How long had that house been there? It was from the 30s. Holy ball. That's like the, that's ever, the most haunted time in the world. The worst <laughs> it was a bad ever. time for yeah. haunting. Did you ever ask the landlord how many bodies were found? No, because the problem was we were always like super late with our rent. Oh. And when we finally moved out, we just put all... This is one of my favorite, like a visual that will stay in my head forever. We just, we cleaned out the whole house. And we, so we had like, say, 20 garbage bags filled with garbage and we just put them all in the garage and shut the door (laughs) knowing we weren't going to get our deposit back Uh, knowing it was just like yeah exactly just burn burn the ground and run so I can't even I've tried to look it up and I don't know what the exact address is did you ever have you talked to those roommates since and like compared as adults compared notes no we had it was like early 20s everybody fell apart yeah kind of thing yeah yeah, you don't talk to them anymore yeah slowly one by one it was like it all peeled off and Mm -hmm went terribly awry so that's the worst thing i've ever heard i actually still do talk to my friend patty riley who's the one that lived in the attic i'm still good friends with her but for a while her we ghost were, we or her oh. oh wait she's been dead this whole time oh. that's the scariest shit yeah, i've ever like heard <laughs> we need to recover from that it's pretty good i feel like i'm pretty good you guys have a good podcast <laughs> you out <laughs> Bye. you checking out you, checking yeah, out? you just can't <laughs> no nope. do it but no, for scary. like life, for life wise. You're like, oh. remember that day that Allie became catatonic and never functioned again? <laughs> remember when she couldn't anymore? Yeah, she, she just didn't. She just what, stopped. Can doing you it. check yes or no? No, I can't. <laughs> That's <laughs> the scariest shit ever. It was pretty crazy. I just love that it was so like when you watch those ghost shows. When I watch them now, even you watch these people who have things happen to them over and over again, and they don't move out of the house or do anything. Yeah, and it seems so stupid, but having actually gone through it. You can't talk about it. Like you, it's so weird, but like people will be like, who was doing the dishes last night? And like liter- legitimately angry. And, and you just kind of go like, huh, whatever. Cause it's so weird. You just don't know. You don't have the answers. And that's so you hard don't. to come to that conclusion too, to be like, must have been a ghost right. doing the dishes. Yeah. Like what? Yeah. What, do you, how do you explain it? If someone's like, please explain how this happened. Are you like fucking ghosts? Or are you like, you know what? It could have been. I tried it. I was taking a new allergy medication. Like <laughs> what? How do you explain it? What do you think is the explanation? The th- I mean, it could have been a medical thing. 
If you get hung been... by a ghost and have the same dream, right? The Come same on. dream thing is the reason why. Like I could have said, oh, I was having a very upsetting lucid dream or something mm-hmm. like that, and it was based on the fact that I was reading, you know, Silence of the Lambs. Except for my, what happened. It had nothing to do with like I wasn't a detective. There was no, you know what I mean. It wasn't like I never saw the thing's face. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't the same at all. So uh, I don't know how to explain it. I just think that there were super bad vibes in that house to begin with. I think having the same dream as your roommate in a way that I weirdly like blind tested her accidentally yeah. just by saying the thing, and she like. It was like you. She did not like it and was like very upset by the fact that it happened that way. And I kind of have that thing of like, fine, if the scientist came in and said radon gas was leaking in and you Mm -hmm. hallucinated, I'd be like, fine. But I also know the experience that I had and I can remember it very, very clearly. I wonder how many like, you know, the bad vibes you get in certain places that you go and visit. And like, I wonder like what percentage of them is. I, I wish we could know, like, well, yeah, that guy that was sitting at the counter is a fucking serial rapist. Yeah. I was just going to say. That's why you had bad vibes. It, what if we, you know how before we used to be like, well, you must, if you have bad humors, that must <laughs> yeah. be, you need to get this part of your body leached. Like, we didn't know what cancer was for a long time, maybe. Mm-hmm. And we didn't know what diabetes was. And we didn't know that we were like, well, the woman can only make daughters kill her. <laughs> like, we didn't know yeah. how science worked. What if we find out? What if the next generation is like, oh, yeah, people didn't believe in bad vibes and now we have vibometers and you can just tell where vibes are coming from well I, yeah well it's just i was gonna say like the guy robert durst in the jinx Ugh. where the first time i saw his face on the tv screen he was like it was one of those perp walks where he was coming around a corner i don't know the perp walk was a thing. Perp walk? The yeah, perp walk. When, they, when they like walk the perp to court or out of court to Ooh. jail like to get him arraigned like the, get the first perp walk like orange jumpsuit jail jailers around him type of like has his hair the way it was when he got arrested or whatever yeah Ugh. so the first time i saw that shot his eye like he looked like a demon to me yeah right? and i think there's like those there are those people that i think you you could be you could know about certain people, but you also just wouldn't. It's about a safety thing where you're not normally around like full on psychopaths. Mm-hmm. So you probably aren't working on it to mm-hmm. go, Oh, I better really get this sense going. Yeah. But if we, I don't know. If but that it's was also, if you studied. think I was just talking to a butterfly expert about like monarch butterflies being poisonous and then they, there's mimicry where other butterflies are not poisonous, but they look a lot like it. So birds are like, Oh hell no, I'm not going to eat that. And they're like, wah, wah, I'm not poisonous. <laughs> mm-hmm. but when was the last time you saw someone in a jumpsuit and handcuffs and you're like, he seems cool. Like <laughs> right. you have like it's the same thing where like you see anyone in a mug shot shot is like shots, shots. <laughs> is like you're like oh that's a crazy person well, also because you never time, see normal people like that yeah, also true. at the same the same time with that is like what if you see someone like I have a bad vibe about him but really it's your brain being like those eyebrows and that the look in his eye and that like that lip and teeth are the same ones that like Hitler had and you just don't put it together because your brain just automatically that does that tiny it. mustache right? Yeah. And you're, you're like, like Charlie Chaplin's an asshole <laughs> <laughs> why does he keep yelling at everybody oh my god <laughs> it's probably out of films well, I've, been so going, clicky. I've been going to uh, GI doctors to figure out what the fuck is wrong with my stomach and why I'm constantly belching hey hey uh, marry me and, it's my favorite thing about you <laughs> the Georgia belches uh-huh. you're good at it I'm great at it you're good at I wonder if you have a be- like if people have belch scores like, I'd say that your belch score would be pretty high. I would, I would compete. Yeah, yeah you know what sure. I mean? I'd be confident competing in that Olympic they, sport. It brings a party together. Does it? Really it does. Or does it scare everyone away? It doesn't scare anybody. You say they bring us party together, but you're the only person from that party that I was belching at and told to stop belching <laughs> by my boyfriend. <laughs> Glenn he, is lovely. Well, you asked for suggestions. I think he was pressed. That's... Mm, he came but up also, with it pretty quick. It's... <laughs> <laughs> When I said, "Am I doing okay, baby? Am I like, am I being okay at this party that I don't know that many people?" Well, yeah, but um, you might want to stop belching so loudly. It's like a you're like a human frog. It was the only thing that made me feel comfortable at that party. I literally was on the verge of like, I'm gonna drop these mashed potatoes off and I'm fucking out of here. And then Georgia oh, started belching, giving like by a myself. party frog, because Georgia was wearing like a vintage dress and matching pillbox hat or whatever. No, and I, was I wasn't. Like, Oh, Thank good. You. I wore my flip flops. I don't belong here. Uh, you know, the girl, the girl qualifications. I've, I've skipped all of them. I and overdo then- it because I'm a fucking man. <laughs> 
there's no other way <laughs> besides looking under my dress that you wouldn't know that I'm a dude. Everyone must think Vince is just like ventriloquisting. He's just burping <laughs> with his mouth closed and tugging a string behind him. Wait, but you, so you're going to GI doctors? Oh yeah, and there I, I'm learning so much about the gut and therefore gut feelings and oh, how right. it's actually gut feelings is the same as having a feeling from your brain. They call your gut your second brain because right. you make eighty percent of your serotonin yeah. in your guts. Mm-hmm. And number, it's number two. I mean, there's a joke well, in there somewhere that I'm just, sure. Yeah. I, oh, Sometimes if you just say number two, the joke will come. It'll follow after. And number two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ugh, who doesn't love some Blue Apron? I feel like everyone who tries Blue Apron is obsessed with it, and with good reason. It's the number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the country, because they're just, they're killing it. So they send you a box with all of the ingredients when the right exact amount of each ingredient you need to cook. So they reduce food waste, and they also have partnerships with 150 local farms and fisheries and ranchers, so they have sustainably sourced seafood and responsibly raised beef and chicken and pork. So that's good. They're they're keeping an eye on the prize there with the good quality food. And you'd think this must be pretty expensive, but you can you actually end up spending like under ten dollars per person for a really good homemade meal. So I say if you haven't done this, go for it. I have had so much fun cooking with it. You're like, what's gonna be in here? And then you actually are home, you're cooking, you're listening to perhaps a podcast while you're cooking. So you can try Blue Apron if you've never tried it, give it a shot. Um you get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash slumber party. So again, blueapron.com slash slumber party. You get your first three meals free. So come on, you guys. Eat on us. Enjoy this. Let us know what you cooked. Um, Tweet us, Instagram us your pictures. I want to see what your handiwork involved. Food pictures. Totally okay in this particular instance. So enjoy blueapron.com slash slumber party. Go stuff some good stuff in your face. Can I tell you one of my New Year's resolutions is to not have blackheads? Oh, mine is not to have giant sits. Hey, hey, we're both fucked. But those are good resolutions. And you know what can help with both of us is BioClarity. You know what? This is a great way to take on the new year. It's an acne treatment. It's specifically designed for young adults. We will always be young at heart. Yep. And our skin still breaks out. So we use it. It's proven to clear up acne blemishes. Sorry, young adults. You're going to keep having them as old adults like Sorry. we are. And it helps maintain clear, confident skin without all the harsh side effects of other treatments. Yeah. 90% of clinical study patients said they had clear skin and they would recommend it to their friends. 90%. 90% is a really good rate. That's a good And it's three easy steps. You have, to, you have a cleanse, you have a treatment, and then you have a restore. And with those three steps, your skin is clear as fuck. Yeah. Give it a try. Put this on your face. So yeah. put your best face forward so you can go out and kick all the ass you need to kick in 2017 Mm because it's a battlefield out there in the world. Go to bioclarity.com and our listeners get their first month for only $9.95 plus free shipping. That's cheap. Yeah, that's $20 off. And it comes with a 100% risk-free money-back guarantee. Enter the code PARTY. So go to bioclarity.com and enter the code PARTY to get your first month for $9.95 plus free shipping. Yeah, give it a shot, Then send us photos of your face. Yeah, we all deserve better skin. We do. It's our faces. It's our right. It's a big organ. Go treat your biggest organ to some bioclarity. (laughs) Hey, it's a big organ you got there. Hey, it's so clear. (laughs) Gross. Don't you guys? Nope. What have we learned? Don't don't push it. <laughs> Number two. If we've learned it, I'm let's do another sorry. slumber party. Yeah, let's do another slumber. Ooh. Which one? Huh? You know which one? <gasps> the snack. Snack. Snacky snack. Okay, Karen. Yeah. When it's late at night, like midnight, mm-hmm. and you're hungry, and you hear a ghost doing dishes <laughs> in the kitchen, <laughs> but you want to make a snack. It's a weird snack too. It's like it's like it's not like a snack you would share with other people. It's a snack that you're like. Well, I have this and I have this and I'm going to put these things together and I'm going to shove them into my face. Mm-hmm. It's a shame free zone. Okay. Yeah. What? It could be any, like, what's the thing that you're like, oh, this is really good. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'll take kettle corn and then I'll pour coffee creamer in a bowl <laughs> and I'll eat it with a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> wow that was incredible it's like cereal <laughs> is it <laughs> it's, it's, a like shame. Cereal. it's a shame free zone Georgia oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Yes, yes, yes. anyway I thought that was just for Karen that, that, that helps <laughs> that was I mean truly the gloves are off I can say anything now yeah, it Try feels it. totally free I did know when Allie was at the store and she was like I gotta get snacks what is Karen like and I'm like well I know that she likes onion dip yes right yes. for sure I think this past Super Bowl, 
I was by my I was at home by myself and I bought onion dip old school soup into sour cream with ruffles. Yeah. And then I'd say I, I got through the first third and then I was like, you had best put this away. <laughs> you had best get rid of this. Cause you could, I mean, there's no reason to stop eating that. There's no, no it, there's, and you get thirstier and thirstier and the dip is cold and <laughs> yeah. wet. So you're like, this is liquid. It, it's, it really becomes very painful. The salt and the, well, the, what's great about it is that like, after like the first quarter, you realize, like, you realize how, what the perfect amount of chip to dip ratio is and so you keep trying it and then you want to try like two chips to dip this dip yeah. Yeah. and you just keep experimenting I that's dip the, you dip we dip that's yeah. <laughs> exactly but that's also the kind of thing where I would get lost in it and forget that people could see me I would start getting very task oriented mm-hmm. and and like kind of forget that there was people around so I was like oh yes uh, just the right amount or just the right <laughs> density or whatever I only go to shit so because of snacks you're just under your coat with the chip and the dip and the rest of the party can everyone happening? leave the room or I'll tell you what happened in the Super Bowl um, live I think- tweeting your chip and dip <laughs> <laughs> almost got it so close the percentages were just slightly off oh, no. I think the thing that's embarrassing but I really love and this is actually it's not like um a jerry rig snack. It's actually an official party uh, hors d'oeuvre that my friend used to make when we lived in New York. She would always bring it. And it's a block of Philadelphia cream cheese cut in half. And in the middle, you fill it up with wasabi. What? Um, and then you stick the ha- other half back on. So it looks like a big, huge, fat green sandwich. <gasps> with Right? Cut, crust cut off. Then you get some rice crackers. And then you get some soy sauce and you pour soy sauce over the top in a very 70s hors d'oeuvre way. So it's like, it just looks like a drizzly thing. Uh-huh. And then you just eat. <laughs> Did she make this up? I've never it heard of It was her recipe. mom's recipe. Oh and God. we used to just, we used to go to parties or have like parties because we all work together and just stand around this dish and just be like. Just is it one of those things that's like it. so much better than you think it's going yeah, to be? Exactly. I guarantee you that it came out of an article entitled Oriental Party Dip. <laughs> totally. <laughs> exactly. Totally. Go, who wants to go fly east for the flavor? <laughs> yeah. And then like the, the tablescape for the photo is just like the most racist thing yeah. that ever <laughs> happened. There's like Chinese stuff, but it's Japanese wasabi. Yeah. <laughs> no. A picture of Mickey Rooney from <laughs> Breakfast at Tiffany's on the table, lovingly oh, no. placed no. in the center. I know it's so good because if you have a Philly roll, it's all of those elements, kind of. Yeah. Right. right? Yeah. Except for the fish. If you which... put some fake, some K-R-A-B, some crab in there right. somewhere. Or some smoked Not salmon. It would, salmon. Be a, it would be a Philly roll. <laughs> totally. Oh my God. I'm you know what? Tomorrow. My mom used to make us, and I still kind of crave, you get a piece of um, like de- deli meat turkey and you put a, you put a smear of cream cheese down the middle yes. and then you wrap a p- it around a pickle spear yes pickle yeah it is i don't i haven't had it since i was a kid and my mouth is watering so is yeah. mine but i think that's just because we're like oh so much vinegar i gotta yeah. 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 i used to do that with bologna that uh, our latchkey kid situation that is a latchkey like, snack was just like a two inches of cream cheese <laughs> on a wafer of bologna me my my sister and i for our latchkey snacks it was either seven up or lemonade and just stacks of buttered saltines oh yes. yeah or, or toast. Yeah. Just like six pieces of toast each. <laughs> it was white sour. bread or like bread? Yeah. Um, sourdough. Oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah, sourdough is good. And just watching all the reruns of Three's Company and learning all yes. about bad gender dynamics. Yeah. <laughs> My dad would let us watch it when he was home. We would have to like sneak it when he was home. Yeah. I think that's where I got my style from. Janet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've wanted to go as Mrs. Roper for Halloween for like 30 years. I'll be Mr. Row. Roper. We carry a plunger and it seems sexually unattractive (laughs) to me. Do that for you. (laughs) What's your next? This is a good game. Um, Halloween is coming up in like seven or eight months. It's coming up. <laughs> so you better get yeah, ready. Yeah, I hope you know. I know. What was you, um, d- if you had to be a Halloween thing, oh, or yeah. what were you last year? Or like, you what's your up? dream Halloween that you'll never do? Last year, it's so funny because I kind of, since that, I think the last time I honestly dressed up besides this past year 
was in that haunted house. I dressed as Jackie O, got drunk at <gasps> seven, and was passed out for my whole party. No. I Wait. had, and it was Jackie O with the blood on her. So I had this kind of awesome, like, pillbox hat, 60s, one of those dresses that had the little jacket matching. Uh, like a, a Chanel suit? It, yeah, but basically. And I, just, like, we sp- sprayed blood all over the front of it. <gasps> oh and we're, like, God. all ready for the party, but I had already started drinking, like, at three. No. So by the time, like, literally people, I remember my cousin John showing up, and my cousin John was a guy with a toothache so he came in with a thing wrapped around his head oh yeah I love and those. in a robe and that was his costume and i remember seeing him and laughing <laughs> and then going and laying down and being uh, totally passed out for the rest of my and party. this is your early 20s yeah. you spent all that time splattering brains and blood on yourself oh my god what were, uh, god you were probably drinking like all uh, like wine coolers amaretto sour yeah. or something yes wine coolers oh. there's a lot of midori for oh. some reason. Oh no. Midori was like, when we discovered melon balls, it was like, hallelujah. Yeah. Um, but Keystone Light, for some reason, was like, I think it was always yeah, on what sale the shit? at the like fake 7 Eleven across the street. That's a definitely a Sacramento drink, I think. Oh right? yeah, I yes. know. Yeah. For sure. They must have made it up there or something. Hams, they had hams, hams was there. Remember Natty Light? Yes. People yes. used to drink natural light in my, in the dorms. Yeah. I'd see them carrying like the 36 packs, like a ghetto blaster, these stupid, dumb white kids in Santa Barbara with like a little. <laughs> Soul patches, and, like have necklaces. Ew. Yeah, three like, eleven, the worst. Well, people. I still hang out with people who drink like Bud and Bud Light, and I'm like, what are you? Do- what are you doing? Well, I think it's my dad. Like, is a humongous Budweiser. Like, he's like a weird. Like lifelong fan will never drink anything yeah, else. They have like this this uh, what is it called affinity or like loyalty a attachment loyalty, loyalty. Yeah. yeah for sure. And also, I think it's like a certain taste. Like when you're drinking for maximum in ingestion, you're you don't want to like get all caught up in the complexity of an IPA. <laughs> you're just like get this fucking beer down, especially because you know you're going to be drinking for the next. 12 hours yes you guys it's hydrating because it's three percent alcohol <laughs> yes <laughs> right and 20 calories <laughs> per can and water from down by the river uh, i i have whenever i'm at a barbecue or something and someone's like do you want something to drink and you're like okay yeah what do you have and like well there's there's uh sink water or there's beer and you're like okay they're like you can drink the water that's the melted ice at the bottom of the cooler and you're like ah and i went to i went to a party last weekend like a like a cool girl's Barbecue, birthday barbecue, and I was like, "Do you want to drink?" I was like, "Yeah." And it was like shitty beer or a huge handle of warm vodka, and a, there was a liter of Coke, and there was no ice, and I was just like, oh. "And there was like, there was like refrigerator ice, which makes me sad." Mm-hmm. Yeah, fridge ice and it tastes and, weirdly salty. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. only solo cups, and I was like, "What is happening?" So I would like, okay, well maybe I'll have a glass of vodka, like a sip some vodka, but I don't want to sip it out of a solo cup with oh that all or some old fr- freezer ice. Yeah, it tastes like like old peas oh it, uh, it it's always, totally slight there's always a garlic vibe yeah. that's where you need a vibometer to be like what vibe is in this ice <laughs> garlic garlic, garlic, garlic and like a couple coffee grounds yeah. do you ever do that where you yeah. like you get some ice out and you're like i didn't put the coffee anywhere near this area you know what i think ground. it's really we- a weird thing that they haven't invented like like covered ice cube trays is not like a normal thing covered yeah, yes, why isn't there right. like a basic plastic covering for, I don't know. for ice cube trays? I am, I. Because also then you could tracer. stack it easier. Totally. Sorry, you but you it. interrupt it. Yeah, because you can, you always stack or I always stack them wrong. Of course. I can't, you, I cannot deal with ice trays. Like the idea oh, that Allie, you don't do that. No, if I'm going to go to my, my freezer and they're like, you have an option of eight ice cubes <laughs> is your maximum. I would lose my shit. I buy bags of party ice. Oh, you do. I've been buying bags of party ice for 15 years where I was like, I can't going to someone's uh, freezer and they're like, yeah, the ice trays are in there. And I'm like, you have four ice cubes left. <laughs> God, what are we going to make do? some more? You, you should, you could have spent your money on a really nice refrigerator. I know that has water and ice. Yeah, I know. You spend so much money on ice bags and water, water things. I, like my, we've discussed my water situation on this podcast for two years. And we've talked about I, it alone too. It's like not I, just the podcast. <laughs> I can't get it together. It's the part of my life where it's like, how did, like, how is that person still smoking a pack a day? And you're like, I I don't know. Like, how am I still buying water? I can't figure it out. Like, I I need to you need lugging to it up your, it? to your fourth floor apartment. I'm really frustrated. You don't want to get involved with like a narrowhead situation. No, or, like, because a- I don't know where to put the cooler in my home, mm-hmm. and I, I don't know what to do with the seven like five gallon bottles of water. Yeah, and then 
I still am going to need eye. It, you guys, I'm just, I'm sorry. <laughs> you seem so frustrated. Right you're now. still going to need eyes. I love you say that like there's going to be a situation where you're going to buy bottles of water and you get ice with it. Yeah. Or it's like, I'm not going to solve one problem and not the other I know, one. But you know, know what? This is what I do. It's very overwhelming. <laughs> what you, you're projecting. It's only problems. There's no solutions. No, you're right. You're right. I've, what I need is to own the home I live in, have a major filtration system, and then have an ice maker and a water dispenser in my f- refrigerator. But that's so many steps. Yeah, that's and getting a home. First. I've got some yeah. bad news. What? Yeah. Oh, you own a home. <laughs> As a person who's got a home, yeah. I have never changed the filter in my <gasps> water thing ever. Is that I've thing lived there for to do? 10 years. Yeah. I think you're supposed to change it every once in a while. Where is the filter? What in is I have no idea. I, I think you'd have to pull the, re- the refrigerator out and like it's behind it somewhere. I think it's going to be thing. calcified. Like it's there's you're going to find some cool shit in there. Here's what's going to happen. And this is the most annoying thing about life. You're going to do it. It's going to take you three minutes and you're going to be like, what the fuck yeah. is wrong with and me? And the water is going to taste so much so better. So much better. Everything. Yeah. Your life is going to be better. I know. Isn't it weird that I don't know how to solve my own water problem. But if you were like, hey, Ali, can you come over and change my filter? I'd be like, oh, yeah, that sounds yeah, fun. Totally. Yeah. That sounds like such fun. Because who knows? You could find like a have half of a man's finger in there. You could find like <laughs> a new is. species of like. That's that taste. Of, of ice feathers. I don't know. Or you could have been drinking mold this whole time and like de- you're depressed and you, you did guys. thought you were just depressed and it's mold <gasps> but it's it's a it's i'm drinking my own depression totally i mean that would be great if that was wouldn't that solution. be great if that was it if it's anyone that easy <sighs> if anyone has water solutions hit us up at ali and georgia People are going we'll to. pass it on i love that about our listeners is they're like here's a really random oh we should read that listener email from the the sn- the sn- uh, nose boner oh, one yeah do you want to hear a funny story yeah okay. yes. go on but i just was gonna say uh, the last time I did dress up for Halloween to, to circle oh, yeah. all the way back around right. oh, bring it. was because Matt, our friend Matt McCarthy uh-huh. had a Halloween party and he said the uh, costumes were required. He did? Yes. Were you and dressed? So, huh? Yes. But you probably didn't notice because what I did was I went to CVS and I bought some blue scrubs which you can buy at CVS. What? Nurses yeah. scrubs. I don't know it. And I just went as the Ebola nurse. So... Because I didn't want to try and I didn't want to have like an outfit on and I didn't want to do anything, but I was like, this is perfect. And then I walked into this party and every person that I knew or was friends with at that party was not dressed up. And I was like, God damn it. Why did I fall for this? I'm not a dress up person. I I bent over backwards because Matt, who he doesn't give a shit. And then the first person I see is Joe. He, of course he has no costume and nobody that I knew at that party did. I showed up and we had a costume on. What did you do? Vince and I were fucking uh, <laughs> Henry Rollins and um, oh my god, uh, Dio, uh, Dio, Ronnie James Dio. No, <laughs> um, Henry Rollins and um, oh my god, help me out here, Dustin. Danzig. 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 Oh. What did I say? Glenn, Dio? I was Glenn Sorry. Danzig and he was um, Henry Rollins and we were in love. Henry and Glenn in love is That's like a nice. it was really book. badass. My dream. Wait, were we there at the same time? Yeah, you remember I crashed yours and Brent's conversation, and I was like, oh, I don't feel bad that I'm interrupting this private conversation because you're never going to fuck each other because you know because <laughs> one of you is gay. So That's I have true. to say though, if you were if you were dressed as the Ebola nurse and you didn't want to be at that party, you'd just be like, gotta go in quarantine, fuckers, yeah. and you yes. leave after two minutes. Yeah, I, and you're actually, out. You, I looked super normal. It looked like I came from work because I always wear clogs anyway. That's kind of how I based I based the whole <laughs> outfit on the fact that I need to wear these clogs. And I was like, all right, Ebola nurse, that's good. But after a while, it was like very comfortable, and those blues are like look good with my features. Like it seemed like a good idea. Is it weird that you could probably just buy those at CVS and then roll around Kaiser and just like walk around all day and probably yeah. like pick up shit off of carts? You could get yes. an old um like neck thing from a concert a or something. Yeah. Yeah, and just wear that around. Yeah, it's like, like an a, Aerosmith backstage pass from 92. <laughs> you're like, what? Yeah. That, and you flash it at people. Like, you're like, like, nurse, please go get me some gauze. <laughs> oh my God, nobody try that. You just get free coffee all the time. <laughs> um, can, I, can I tell you guys Such something? Such good hospital coffee. I smell coffee. so bad right now. Do you smell really bad? Sorry. You smell bad? We don't yeah. care. I can't smell okay. anything. This is a pad kit. Everything smells about me. You I'm smell, sorry. you can smell as bad yeah. as you want. Do you want to hear, um, <laughs> oh yeah. Should we play another summer party game or do, should I read a. Maybe we'll read that when we do a solo. Okay, we'll read it when we do a solo, but just know that it is just concerning nose boners. We'll get there later. Also, what's another, email us people because you guys write the best stuff. Yeah. What's another? What's your next summer party game? Do you want to do... Hmm. Uh, Boopa? Let's do... What do you like? Let's do BB Boopa. <laughs> Boopa? Let's do... Oh, okay. Let's. I guess Boo Boo more than Bebop. <laughs> that was a good one. That 
was me computing. Like yeah. that was my brain going, Eagle cock baits, bunch what is it called when Hell. it's loading, loading. Buffering. Buffering. Yeah. Thank you were you. buffering. Should we do light as a feather? Should we do Let's do book club. Okay. I like book club. Okay. Um book club is just where we're like, what are you rating? It's what a we good? call it book club. <laughs> It's easily it's easy to organize when you have yeah, labels yeah. like that. They yeah. just file under book club. That's funny. I just went to the last bookstore for the first time, which is a the big, last bookstore with the big bookstore time. downtown. Yeah. Uh, oh, I didn't mean to say it like I know, that. I know, but I like it. Um, which was nice. And so I got a book by Colin McCann, who I love as an author. He mm-hmm. wrote a book called Let the Great World Spin, which is amazing. Ooh. And so he has another book called Transatlantic. I don't know if it's older or newer or whatever I just got it and then I got um kind of it looked like a it looked like an intelligent bodice ripper type book like it looked like an other <laughs> Bolin girl type book yeah. that like when you're reading it you're like yeah okay you're a historical d- dramedy or you know drama a novel but you're writing about fucking yeah but it's just this is just like elizabethan fucking that's the only reason this book exists it's like not intelligent but it seems intelligent because it's in the fa- in the past is yes it, is it but are they is it like historically accurate like i ripped her bloomers off or are they like kind of doing it kinky like they're like her g-strings were totally exactly <laughs> you're like wait a minute you're borrowing from the present and the past yeah. the ones i like are accurate because i really feel I don't want to read unless I'm going to learn something true and factual. Mm-hmm. Oh, unless it's by an author that I really like. I, I want it to be some it like almost like worth the time. <laughs> it's ridiculous. No, that makes That's sense. basically yeah. an excuse why I almost never read. But <laughs> um, so like uh the other Boleyn girl, I think, was true. I mean, like, that's just, they just kind of made it, they dramatized it for the yeah. story, but it really happened. That's also, what I'm looking for. This, as I opened it the other night, uh, it's about World War II and, and the Italian resistance and something and some girl and whatever. And some <laughs> boobs the back and of the book. Some <laughs> She's actually reading from the summary right now. <laughs> <laughs> the back of the book is like, it's about some shit There's with like some stuff. like a fucking girl in a sweater. And, and resistance. Uh, and you know, girl. a gun or what have you, cigarettes. <laughs> and, um, but... And there's a piece of art. So on the cover, there was the art. And so I thought the book was from that era, but it's actually a fake World War II uh, novel because there was all the it has a map. So I was like, oh, a map. I'm going to learn so much. (laughs) Then I get home and check the map and it's all fake Italian towns that they say in the corner of like, here are the fictional Italian towns we'll be talking about. Rigatoni. Yeah. (laughs) Why don't you do real Italian towns? Why don't you tell Italian me a real town, story? Yeah, then maybe yeah. that Italian town, like Pizzaville, is going to be like we never had, we never had a, a couple true. that lived there. Pizzaville is like Pizzaville is known for not having that kind of. There's like, like there's no Calzone has ever been ripped in our town. <laughs> all these all these like housewives come to Calzone Town to be like, where's the tree yeah. under which they consummated? And you're like, oh yeah, the spaghetti tree. <laughs> yeah, you know when Matt Damon was the star of this movie that they I, I would book? read some Elizabethan softcore porn. Yeah, I would treat myself a little bit. <laughs> it's fun. I think it's like we've all we've seen and heard and know about people fucking and say an office building. Or right. you know, because the pool man came. But let's go back to its <laughs> different time and explore that it era. Fun. Let's go because the the fountain man came. The fountain. <laughs> man. You? So I'm here to replace the algaes. <laughs> Yeah. He's also 70, but it didn't matter back yeah, then. No, back right. then. Because you're 14 like, and you're of marrying age. And yeah. it doesn't matter who has what VD because everyone's going to die from one anyway. Everyone's yes. quite lousy with syphilis. Everyone is yeah. just. That's why I can't take those seriously because I'm like, you know, you're going insane because you have syphilis and you're oh, yeah. trying to fuck. You're, you've got so many diseases and it's just crusty down there. Yeah. yeah. So much crust. I mean, chamber pots, you guys. Ugh. Google it. Okay, Hi. wait. Ugh. Speaking yeah. of fucking. Okay. Do you want to play Fuck That? Let's play Fuck That. Okay, so Fuck That is a game we play at the end. It's two things. It's one thing you love so much, you would absolutely rip its bodice off. (laughs) (laughs) And and another thing that you hate so much, you're like, fuck that, I hate it. So we'll start with the thing you hate. That way we end on on an uplifting note. We try. We Um, try. I think the thing I really, I was trying to think of like the thing I hate the most, most, and it's people who use smiling and positivity as like a weapon. Mm. What monsters? <laughs> yeah, like those, there's those people who are like, hi, all the time, but then they uh, are like conniving and backstabbing and sociopathic. But like, 
get they get, get you off kilter because of the smileyness. Mm. Ew, like who literally are they? you baring their teeth and using their teeth is it so mm. you're offset of like it's just that same thing of like going with your gut reaction where you're looking at a thing where you're like, Well, this is positive, so I guess I'm in the wrong for having this feeling when actually they're just showing their teeth to you. It's not, you know what I mean? Like I just think people who, I guess it's about fakeness or whatever, but it's just that kind of thing of like, I would rather a person act neutral and then be sincere when they're actually happy. How can you tell? (laughs) Okay. How can you gauge sincerity? Yeah. Um, well, it's just like kind of long term action, I guess. So it's kind of like you, I, you take it for what it's worth as it happens, but then like it's the, I've just had that happen a couple times of the reveal where it's like, oh no, that person was whatever gunning for yeah. your job the whole time or that person was talking about you behind your back, whatever it is that's like, I just have no respect for it. Cause it's like, well, if you're going to be a sociopath, have the balls to just be an asshole. You know, what's cool is people who are like just a, a dick. They're like, I'm a dick. And then they're a dick to you and we you just can take it or leave it. What? I think it's funny that in this conversation we have the balls to be an asshole or a dick. <laughs> like anything else. Like don't be a pussy. Right? It's like, clearly the message. Don't get your titties in a twist. I'm sorry and be a that pussy. I interrupted with this. It's like no, you're the right. most like grundelicious. You know what? Be the grundle. Don't don't be a dick or an asshole. Yeah. Be kind have be ballsy, so be a grundle. Yeah. It's be the neutral territory. Yeah. Just just actually mean what you say. I don't know. About or something along those dicks. lines. About dicks and balls. <laughs> Sorry. I think that's fair. I think that's a good, fair thing. <laughs> Don't come at Karen with a fucking smiley face emoji when what yeah. you really are bringing is like, what? Like a mm, meh emoji. Yeah. I think also, can I just say that I think talking about fucking under a, a spaghetti tree really put my brain like <laughs> in that valley spaghetti tree yeah. it was in the valley of moist fall and the spaghetti trees were in bloom in italy all these colanders on the ground I'm ready sorry. to catch the as spaghetti. they are yeah <laughs> the, col- the colanders were in bloom ready to was catch that not, the- is that if mine wasn't specific enough i can't no. say there was a guy that cleaned out his trunk before he put his groceries away in a trader joe's parking lot that was totally packed and i was the first person in line <gasps> with a seven car line waiting and he literally cleaned out his trunk and i was like what you are a fucking... passive aggressive yeah. LA douchebag of the highest fucking order. What a piece of shit. It what was kind of, crazy. What was he wearing? He looked like a dude that worked on a TV show. He was wearing a button down Oxford and, and dark curly hair and glasses. Like an yeah. actor or like a producer? Uh, like a writer. Okay. Could have so been. So he looked projecting. like he was, was he doing it in entitlement? italics font because he looked like he got whatever he wanted in my opinion his thing was i'm just doing this now i don't care yeah. like oh. it's that la thing of like this look is, i gotta get this done this is part of my day i yeah. plan this as part of my day and yeah. so and it's never like inconvenience yourself to pull out and go pull on a side street to clean out your stupid fucking yeah trunk. seriously your clean trunk. out your trunk do it before you leave how much do you want it did you wish you had like a nerf bat where you could just go up and pop <laughs> them on the head? just bob them up with a nerf <laughs> Honk at you. I'll, I get to. I am an aggressive person enough that I will do the like, what the fuck, arms, you know, yeah, at, yeah, at yeah. the guy or honk at him. Don't you wish that your your everyone wishes this that their horn had a dial and yeah. you could set yes. it to you could set it to two and be like me. I'm annoyed with Or you, you could and because sometimes you want to do a meep but yeah. you accidentally do a meep. Yeah. yeah, and then you're like, yeah. now I'm the bigger dick because I was trying to alert you that you were being a dick. Like doing a meep, meep. My 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 horn is not conducive to a meep. It's yeah. like a <laughs> or nothing. Yeah, you know. know. You don't want to. You don't want to be like, like popcorn. <laughs> well, and also, mine's only a meep, so it totally sounds like go fuck yourself. <laughs> it's like the weakest. Or it sounds like sad. you're being cute about it. Yeah, so exactly. Like, like, hey, Mister. Like you have an angry face. Trunk. Like no, 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 not that. <laughs> Oh, Those are both legit, and I get both of them. And <laughs> Super I, legit. Wonderful. Okay. Georgia, what do you hate? I hate, okay, I love music from other countries. I love music from Israel and from Africa and from... You are not racist. Middle East, and I love music from all kinds of the globe. You love world music. Except I hate world music. <laughs> Except, that's what I hate. I hate world music. I get it. I get it. I, I I didn't want to ever you have say, to say what the difference. Is. I didn't want to ever be the person on earth to say this first, but I get it. I, I I love music from other countries. Half of my record collection is shit that I was like, whoa, this is a weird thing from the seventies that like got recorded in Pakistan. I'm gonna buy it. Yeah. But I fucking go into a place and they're playing world music and I want to punch everyone in the face. Oh, okay. 
Is like, it because they have like a Peruvian flute and then there's some taiko drums from Japan? Do you think world music no, is to all of the genres in once? It's more the people who are playing world, quote unquote, it. world music. It's like pick the, you're playing mu- Italian music right now. Pick right. that you're playing this, but don't, don't make your fucking vibe in your restaurant or in your store or wherever the fuck be world music. They're have you recently become a vegan? Is that what this is about? <laughs> God, no. Because that sounds like a vegan vegetarian restaurant move exactly. to be like, all of our food is, you know, gluten free or what have you. Like that has anything world to music. do with world music to begin with. I right. think it's also something about there's a there's like a really smug pan cultural tone yeah. of world music DJs. Exactly. Like, you'll turn on KCRW exactly. on a Sunday uh, morning. You're maybe Sunday hey, supposed to be chill. We're playing time. some world music here. And they're so smugly like, look at this stuff. I'm it's in Afrikaans. We're and you're be, like, uh, I <laughs> I know you're a white guy in Santa Monica yeah. and I don't like that you we'll are be being at the Hollywood Bowl call now to win tickets for Blam Bling Blues Lady Luda. Lady Smith so Black Maybe, Mombazo. maybe yeah. you hate it when a white male is an ambassador to multicultural sure. that's music. It. That's it. Or a like corp like a, a restaurant that's like, I know that this fucking dick, rich dick and like his company and corporation owns this restaurant and you're trying to get a vibe by playing quote unquote world music. Yeah. Just play some jazz. Fuck you. Play some jazz. All right. That's Put on a little danzig. For Put some dance again. <laughs> some quiet, mellow dancing. Because it's almost like new age music. It's really, exactly. it's really, it's not legit world. It's just yeah. kind of like a, a curated. And version. it's like you're playing this because you're here. And you're like, yes, this is the weird thing I'm going for. It's not like I love this. I love music from this part of fucking the, you know, of Africa. It's like, no, you're playing this shit to get like cred. Oh my god, is it the equivalent of a person who's smiling when they actually are yes. vacant inside? Don't <gasps> smile at me with your world music. I get it. Be a dick at me. Thank you. Allie, what do you hate? (laughs) With dancing. (laughs) Um, I hate that. I can't, I don't, okay. I hate it when uh, you're watching a reality show where they're trying to make two people mate with each other. (laughs) Like, for example, Married at First Sight last (laughs) night. Oh, God. (laughs) And I hate watching people French kiss on television. It was gonna, it was gonna be moldy berries, and I, I didn't know which I hated more. <laughs> because moldy berries are also a fucking stage five bummer. Yeah. Uh, like, like but, a rando blueberry that's just total mold. In the you middle know what? of the pack. Yeah, even the worse, even worse. I do this thing where I take frozen berries from TJ's <laughs> that mm-hmm. I've carefully put in my trunk for 20 minutes, <laughs> and I pour almond milk over them, and then I cr- crunch them down, and I make them into sort of like a sorbet. A sure. Th- that's what we'll call it. We'll call it a sorbet. We won't call it an Allie's alone eating blueberries on our couch at midnight watching reality TV. <laughs> but every once in a while, you'll be like, mm, this bear is juicy. And then you'll be like, no, it tastes like a moldy Ew. dish rag. Wait, frozen ones get moldy? Yes. And I don't understand it because they're all so dark. You can't tell. <laughs> oh, I don't know that. I didn't know oh, that. But then you're, and then you're eating them and you'll get a moldy one. And then there'll be two people being like, I guess we're married now. <laughs> and your whole life sucks and that happened to me last night but let's end on a thing something we love okay Karen we're gonna end on your love <laughs> okay. your love last uh, Allie you wanna go what do you love I'll talk about something I love okay um there's this thing that I realize happens this time of year it's around Easter you can go into the store Vaughn's Pavilions does this and you go into the egg case and you're like, what's up with these colorful eggs? They're pre-hard boiled and pre-dyed for Easter. But you could just eat hard boiled eggs. Well, that's the thing is they're so, you're supposed to buy them so that you and your husband can hide them in your lush backyard with your beautiful children <laughs> to celebrate Jesus. <laughs> but instead, I buy them by the dozen because I can crack them and adhere to a low carb diet in case someone invites me to a pool party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so wow. have the fun of the dye. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who cares about the dye? I just, oh. someone hard boiled my eggs for me. That's, that's great. Dope. But I'm also wondering, so many people are going to throw in the garbage after their dumb kids put them in a basket continue Where well we- i was just gonna say are they're not the one you're not talking about the ones that come in a bag with no shell no 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 no, no. have Slimy. you seen those yeah Slimy. those are those are i tried to get those like when i was doing a low carb thing and they were it was like here's something to eat so you can barf like, it was <laughs> the grossest thing i've ever looked at smelled taken a bite of and- i believe it it's like epicac but in an egg form <laughs> yeah. i always Egg-a-cack. i'm i mean i'm a person Egg-a-cow. who Ick, ick, a cack. Egg a cack. Can I get an ick a cack latte? <laughs> <laughs> Two pa- 
pumps. <laughs> two pumps. Two pumps. Sugar free. But because I, I can't justify buying hard boiled eggs in general, because I was like, we have a show on the cooking channel. I should be able to boil some eggs for myself. Sure. But I was like, well, shit. If I don't buy these colorful hard boiled eggs, some dick's just going to put them in their backyard and throw them in the garbage <laughs> at the end of the afternoon. Yeah. I might as well buy these and eat them for convenience. You know, 15% of the time I go to hard boiled eggs, I forget that the water's there and I burn the shit out of everything. So I feel like it's an okay, like, yeah. number, number crunching wise. Sure. And it's the same, but you can go out now and I'm swear I'm going to clean out bars and pavilions. Do it. All these people are going to be like, we don't have any eggs to celebrate. How do we <laughs> Jesus what with? Gonna, oh, you're just, oh someone's, we're going to have to do it ourselves. Georgia, what do you, what do you want? I love, and I started the first episode yesterday and I'm already on like episode six or seven. HBO Go, there's a series. I'm fucking in love with it. It's called Getting On. What? Have you seen it? Do you watch it? Oh, yeah. It's so good. What is it? Brilliant. It's fucking Aunt Jackie, who yeah, is y'all. the most incredible actress ever. The best ever. It's, uh, what's her face from uh, Reno 911? Yes. Uh, Niecy Nash. Niecy Nash. She's just like the a princess of human conditions. Okay. <laughs> she's incredible. That's the best thing incredible. I've ever heard. That is the best phrase I've ever <laughs> she heard. She needs to get Hands that. down, today, all you. Thank you. The she princess to, of human could conditions. Could that be the name of this episode? Princess Jack? of human conditions. Yes. She needs to get that tattooed on her back like a book blurb. <laughs> Like Georgia Hardstar, and Rolling the, Stone. Her and then the other nurse who I can't remember her name is Alex. Who? She's the one from Family Guy. And, oh, she from and, Family Guy? and Mad TV. Oh, I didn't know that. I, um, I know her. I, uh, Alex. Wait, is this the yes. show about the old people homes? Yes. It's right. a, yeah, it's the, it's the war, like the recovery ward for old people in a hospital, but they're treated like shit and they're all out of their minds, except for Nisi now. She's like, the, queen of princesses human conditions and she's it's, holding it all down yeah and it's so well done i can't you i watched i binge watched it yesterday and i was so happy this is a potential spoiler alert so anyone okay. mute it but did you see the one where alex borstein gets drunk i just watched that one oh, the very last moment where when she, she leaves back in yeah no like and they, drinks water she says yeah, but it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. there's just a moment that talk about princess of human condition it's so real it's very plain it's like if yeah. you were sitting there writing you'd be like this isn't going to be good enough yeah the way they played it and yeah. the way they did it i cried for like 10 minutes yeah. it was this thing it was just a friendship thing yeah it was a very real moment mm-hmm. of like I know what somebody's a pain in the ass somebody it's like a thing of like when you tax someone's friendship because you're just a human being, yeah, and you have to, and I they like and I'm they accept you right because oh. because they're just like I've been there too, yeah. It also it's, has a lot of fecal jokes, right? The, it's it, the first episode did, and it took me so long to watch it because of that because I hate fecal jokes. But then it's just in the very first. <laughs> I hate the word fecal. It's disgusting. There's some jokes in there, but it's not. There's not a lot. Oh, I want to watch. It's this. so it's okay, real and it's good. Brilliant and and Aunt Jackie. What's her real name? I don't know. I, I do. She's so she's so bad. She's such a bad person. Not like, oh yeah. God. She's like your classic awful boss. Yeah. And there's just like a, there's just like be a shot of her eating a salad and she's like <laughs> chewing cud and she's such a good actress that yes. she makes herself look disgusting. Oh, sorry. We're going, I'm going, I don't know. It's I love it. Amazing. Lori Metcalf. Lori Metcalf. Yes. Oh, nice yeah. job. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to pull that, that out of here. to me. Um, it's important that I said that. Karen, I'm, every, I'm so impressed that you got everyone's name out. I know. <laughs> well, I do love that show. I'm t- the queen of somebody that's like, oh my God, that's my favorite thing in the world. And they're like, what's the name of that actress? I'm like, I don't, I know. Yeah. I've actually only seen two. I've skimmed it. But I've just heard about it. I read about it on Twitter. Someone else told me. Uh, what do you, Karen, what do you love? <sighs> I mean, in general, I was just going to say, in general, which is so dumb, but like, I love going to the movies so much. That's great. I just love it. But particularly, we went and saw that, the Scientology movie, which is, I think, on HBO now. It's not, is it, it now? doesn't have to be like a movie movie. Yeah. But like, getting to see inside, when I first moved to LA, it was 1994, and I was so scared of Scientology. It was the weirdest thing in the world to me that this humongous cult was just flourishing in the center of the city in these big, crazy buildings. They were legitimate. They were legitimate. There were people that I knew that joined it. They, like It was a real um, threat, I guess, kind of. like I remember the LA Weekly did a huge article on it, and you couldn't get the LA Weekly anywhere on Franklin because they would come <gasps> across the street and take all the LA Weeklies and throw them away. Holy so shit. So that you wouldn't read how they're harassing people and calling people pedophiles and just flyering their neighborhood saying this person will touch her child and make people move and all this oh crazy shit. Oh my god. Shit. And like really 